Have independent YouTube content creators sold out for the click, for the clickbait? Have they sold out for sensationalized content? Well, I'll let you guys be the judge. Hey, um, as you guys know, since the last couple of weeks, we ran Project Class 19. It got a lot of attention because of the social media posts that we were putting out during the 75 hours. And YouTube content creators that are actually really good at what they do, like the channel Angry Cops and Filion, who I think have entertaining content and I watch regularly, ended up actually jumping on the bandwagon along with CNN and Fox News, who originally picked up the content from our social media feed. And when Fox News picked it up, they called it the alpha male boot camp that charges you $18,000 to make you a man, which is not what the project is. The only thing they got right about the project is the $18,000 fee. It has never been called the alpha male boot camp. We as instructors never call it alpha male boot camp. I despise the term alpha male because it's chest beating, chest thumping, egotistical maniacs who pretend to be alpha males. It's not on our website. However, I expect that of CNN and Fox News. After all, mainstream media has an agenda. They're part of the opposition. They are the voice of the opposition. And their job is to really demasculinize men. They are there to oppress men. They are there to oppress humanity and, of course, deconstruct the nuclear family. However, when independent YouTube content creators, who I think do a great job in terms of entertainment and education and enlightening information, just kind of run with the headlines that Fox News and CNN run with, well, then I began to question them because I'm like, bro, first of all, your facts are absolutely out of line. Secondly, you could have reached out to me on social media, on Instagram, Facebook, wherever, and said, hey, this is what we think is happening at the project. Is this really what's happening? And I could easily say yes or no, and then show proof and evidence, because you certainly shouldn't trust me. After all, I run the project along with the other instructors. But you can certainly ask me, interview me, or at least get my feedback and thoughts, and then come up with content that would be far more accurate than the absolute misinformation that was put out by Filion and Angry Cops, along with other YouTube content creators. But I also understand why that might be the case because at the end of the day they have to get the clicks they have to be sensationalized they have to use the catchy headlines like alpha male boot camp because well if they don't they can't monetize as much and i could understand that and can in fact i can actually appreciate that after all we monetize our channel here and as you guys know any money that we generate from our youtube show and our youtube lives i always double and donate to shriner children's hospital now i don't know what they do with their money and that's up to them and i believe it's awesome to be a capitalist and i think it's great to create content for humanity, both for entertainment and education. And like I said, I get a lot of value in terms of entertainment from those two channels. However, when they take everything out of context, because remember, the project is 75 hours long. And of the 75 hours, well, during this last class, I think we probably put up 15 to 16 minutes of content in our stories and on our Instagram timeline. So when you take 15 to 16 minutes of very sensationalized, intentionally polarizing content of instructor Steve going off with his K-bar, and you decide that the entire project is that, and you feed your audience that information, well, I think that is misinformation. And I think that kind of aligns you with the opposition in terms of CNN and Fox News, where you don't do any research. Like I can understand why Fox News and CNN wouldn't reach out to me, because they don't want the truth of what the project is, how it serves men, how it's helped men, and how it continues to help men for the last five years. But when independent content creators don't reach out to me and don't ask and don't look, or at least hell, reach out to graduates, reach out to guys that have actually rung the bell and quit, reach out to someone that has actually experienced the projects, reach out to the other instructors. But when you don't and you fabricate your own information based on information taken out of context that was 15 to 16 minutes in total out of 75 hours, well, 
that leads me to believe that you're not interested in telling the truth. You're more interested in selling the click and monetizing on the YouTubes, homie. And that's cool too, man. Like I said, I appreciate that. But what you're about to see now is content from Ryan Mickler's podcast. Uh, just three days ago, I was on Ryan Mickler's podcast, Order of Man. And he said, hey, I saw on Fox News and CNN how they ran the project and all you instructors through the mud. Do you wish to talk about it? And I said, sure, man, I'm an open book. Let's talk about it. So what you're about to see is me answering questions from Ryan Mickler's podcast about the project and about how Fox News and CNN took it out of context. Well, now, of course, along with Angry Cops and Filion, which I've got no beef with. I just wish that you would maybe reach out to me, maybe reach out to some graduates, maybe reach out to guys who have quit uh, and and ask them how their experience was up to the point of them quitting. Because I think it's fair to not only ask graduates, because graduates might say only positive things, but ask the guys who also went through the program and quit and ask them how their experience was. Anyways, having said that, I do have one little challenge before you. I ask you to watch the, the few minutes of footage that's about to come up. And my challenge is both to Filion and to Angry Cops. It is to come out to our October 2024 class and join us. Be a co-instructor, be a spectator, uh, hang out for the 75 hours, and I will give you $5,000 towards your charity of choice. I want to give money, $5,000 towards your charity of choice when you come out, spend the 75 hours with us and actually see and experience what the project is. Like I said, you could be a spectator, you could be, uh, you could be helping out, or if you choose to go through any of the evolutions, you could go through the evolutions. And whether you come back and you shit on the project or you give us raving reviews or anywhere in between, I don't care but at least you'll have seen the truth of what the project is in its totality. And when you're willing to do that, I will give $5,000 to your charity of choice because, well, we can help a lot of good charities in the process of putting the truth out. So without any further ado, watch the rest of this video, enjoy it, and you're about to discover the truth about the project. I wanted to kick this conversation off. Uh, I've seen some things on social media over the past several weeks. Uh, Steve, who is obviously uh, you know, he's within your organization. He's somebody I know very well. He's such an interesting personality. He's such a hard ass, but I think deep down inside, he really cares about people. But there's been some viral stuff going on about what you guys are doing with with men and how you're training men and how you're leading them and calling them up. And uh, there's a lot of controversy around that. Would you mind explaining that? Yeah, yeah. So um, as you know, a couple of weeks ago, we had our 19th class of the project, the Modern Day Night Project. And for anyone who doesn't know what the project is, it's a 75 hour straight experience for men who are, and some of these men are former military, some are first responders, some are entrepreneurs, some are people that are executives, and companies. And so what they have in common is they're men and they lost their sense of, or have never discovered their sense of meaning, purpose, and team. <clears throat> and as you know, when a man doesn't have a sense of meaning, purpose, and team, he is going to start drifting in life. And that's where the vices and escapes typically come in, whether it's infidelity, pornography, alcohol, drugs, uh, you name it, gambling. <clears throat> and so these men, when they come to us to go through the project, it's not like they're going through a mud run or a Spartan race, nothing wrong with that. It's not like they're going through a 75 hour challenge. They're there because they are looking for that community, uh, meaning, purpose, and team. And they understand that they are having some kind of self-sabotaging behavior that's showing up as a pattern in their life that is constantly limiting their human experience in their marriage, in their business, in their finances, in their health and fitness, in their mental and emotional fitness. And so anyway, we ran the project. And as you know, uh, if you want things to go viral, you want to take your iPhone and take the most sensational clips of a 75 hour experience. And so in total, during the 75 hours, it starts at Tuesday at 1 p.m., goes till Friday at 5 p.m. Um, in total, we probably put up about 16 minutes of content on our social media stories uh, from a 75-hour experience. And the content we put up is Steve, uh, mostly, 
dragging these guys around by their rucksacks is Steve, where he takes the K-bar and, you know, Steve's a Marine and he takes the K-bar out of his, uh, out of his side. And he goes, if any one of you who don't belong at the graduation dinner, think you're going to make it somehow to the graduation dinner on Friday. And we all have this project tattoo, us instructors, and actually half the graduates now have this tattoo on their hand or body somewhere because it's so meaningful to us. Steve goes, I will take this effing knife and I'll carve this tattoo off my hand. And so, of course, I know he's going to do that. He does that for every class. When I say, hey, guys, now I'm going to introduce my instructors, it always goes to the Navy SEAL, the Comm Marine, Nick, and then Steve. So I conveniently bring up my iPhone and just start recording and, you know, kind of show the, the expression of all the candidates going through it. So to us, it's standard practice. We want to immediately show them that now we've got dominance over you, that we, you are now ours for the next 75 hours. We're going to control your thoughts, your emotions, your feelings. We're going to trigger you. And we want to see how they react or respond. Obviously, when a man responds to a situation, he's thought it through. If they react, it's from a place of emotion and feelings. Uh, typically, when a fist goes through a wall in front of your wife and she's scared or your kids see that, that's a reaction, an emotional reaction. And then we will stop those moments and go, hey, where else is this showing up in your life? So the project, the entire 75 hours is a metaphor for life. But of course, those clips in my stories and on the MDK project stories went viral. First, Fox News picked it up, and then Barstool Sports picked it up, and then some big uh, content creators on YouTube, like uh, big, I, I think there's one called the Angry Cop or Angry Officer or whatever his account is. Seems like a really, yeah, yeah. really solid guy. Seems like a solid guy. Uh, but what's funny is Fox News, Barstool Sports, the, the Angry Cop, um, there's another big like 7 million subscriber account on YouTube, cool dude with long hair, funny as heck, man. I love his videos. Um, the first time he made a video on us, he goes, look at these guys. They're running a Navy SEAL buds program in the back of a Walmart, uh, which is actually not true. It's my compound in my gym that you've been to. Um, but I get it. I get it. But they're, they're literally taking clips that we have intentionally, uh, taken out of proportion and put out there. What they don't see is the journaling. They don't see the deep work of, you know, talking about the traumas that these men have gone through. They don't, they don't see the conversations and we'll never record the conversations of these men talking about sitting in their car with the pistol in their lap, ready to blow their brains out. Or one gentleman uh, uh, two classes ago said, I found myself at one in the morning, sitting at a park by my house with the pistol in my hand, uh, wondering, you know, what the fastest way it is to kill myself. These are the guys that come to the project. And I say, and I say to you, man, they come from former military, first responders. Uh, we've had guys that have been congressmen and senators um, from Mexico to America, uh, men from every walk of life. And it's not like they're looking for a beat down. They understand that they are about to go through a rebirth and a complete cleansing, emotional purging and an opportunity to connect with the brotherhood. But nevertheless, social media does what it does best. And um, Fox News, Barstool Sports, and a few content creators picked it up and really shit on us, uh, which I don't mind, because I know the work we do. I hear from the men after the project. Um, and certainly not every guy graduates. Some get injured and have to medically roll to the next class. And others decide this is not for them. And they could, at free will, ring the bell and quit anytime they want. Um, but we did get a lot of negative press, uh, but I'm okay with that because none of that is going to stop me from the mission that we're on, which is serving men and helping them rise to their higher potential and purpose in life. And, you know, oftentimes we'll hear on social media, why are you paying $18,000 for the 75 hour course? You know, you can go to the Marine Corps and they'll pay you to, to go through a boot camp type experience. Well, again, all they see is 16, 17 minutes out of 75 hours, they don't see where we're coaching them on their relationships with their kids, with their spouses. They don't see where we're referring them to therapists who can help them overcome uh, sexual trauma that they've experienced or physical trauma that they've experienced or limiting beliefs. They don't see where we're coaching them on their business to help them, you know, 5X and 10X their business over the next few years. And I don't know, I've never been a Marine. I'm a civilian. I've never been in the military. Uh, but I don't think they teach entrepreneurship, how to deal with relationships uh, and any of those things, how to deal with uh, trauma. And so those are the things that we work with. And I'm massively proud of the work we do. There is no place that men can go 
and speak about this stuff and heal with other men. And yeah, I suppose you can go get a therapist. I certainly worked with a therapist 10 years ago. I worked with them for 15 months to get over my shit. Um, however, just like me, most men think that, well, therapy is for broken people and I'm not broken or I don't know that guy. I'm not gonna go talk to that guy or gal about what happened to me as a kid. I'd rather just put it away in my head and move forward in life. But we could never put anything fully away in our head. The reason is that's called compartmentalizing. And yes, you think you put it away, you put it in a box and you put it away and then you put other boxes in front of it and on top of it so you don't see it. But it's still showing up in areas in your life, in your relationship, in your business, in your, with how you interact with your kids, how, how you feel about yourself. And I'm not the most tree hugging, woo woo type of guy that's gonna play a sound bowl and, and go hug a tree. But I can tell you, if there's not a lot of self-respect and self-love, you're gonna constantly self-sabotage through some kind of vice or escape. And it's gonna ruin your relationships. It's gonna ruin your human experience. And since we only get one chance at this, at this thing they call life on this rock, like why not have the most fulfilling human experience with your spouse, with your kids? Um, with your friends, with a business that you can build and give a lot of that money to charities and causes that you believe in. And to do that, we have to unfuck ourselves. That's, there's no other way to say it. And men have no outlet for that. And I wanted to create the outlet and that's why we created the project. Do you think the, the level of, I mean, obviously there's this other side that a lot of people don't see, but clearly there's a level of intensity to your programs, to put it mildly. Uh, do you think that this is a requirement? Do you think this is something that is is necessary? Or, and, and, and I'm just trying to look at it from anybody who might be listening. I know you, but I'm also trying to figure out what people might see. Is that necessary for a man? Or is there another approach that doesn't require that same sense of in your face or attitude or confrontational element to it. Yeah, that's a good question. And no, it's absolutely not necessary. It is necessary for the project, the way we run it. And we certainly don't, don't hide the fact that we are very much in their face, that we are very confrontational. Um, and that's on purpose because look, I worked with the therapist for 15 months. I put myself through all these physical challenges because I just love trying new things and hiring a coach and going through a physical challenge, whether it's running a training, training for and running a marathon in six weeks, rock climbing, jujitsu, MMA fighting. Um, I put myself through hard adversity intentionally because adversity does introduce a man to him to his highest self. Uh, however, we also know that many of these men won't go out there and do it. So we're saying, look, pay for the experience. And not only are we going to have the healing conversations and the deep, meaningful work, but we're also going to test you because John Eldridge's book, um, he talks about every man wants to know if he has what it takes. And most men have never really figured out if they have what it takes. Maybe dad was absent. Maybe they had no older male figure in their life to show them the way of men, um, as our friend Jack Donovan would say in his book. And so at the project, we also teach them, um, our, our Navy SEAL, he's a, um, he's a combatives, uh, pistol combatives expert and he'll teach them room clearing with a pistol and we have jujitsu instructors come in and teach them you know uh, combatives in terms of grappling and what happens if you're attacked we teach them we've got a seer instructor who comes in and teaches them how to you know have situational awareness and be able to talk your way out of a kidnapping situation or be able to break out of zip cuffs and duct tape and handcuffs and all these things that are cool guy skills that I went out and just did because I wanted to learn. You know, I love my dad. He brought us to the United States. He, he freed us from, from communist rule, but my dad never taught me this stuff. So I went out seeking it out and paid for it and got that. Not every guy's going to do that. So we decided that we're going to make this a fully immersive experience that includes combatives, pugil sticks, um, that includes like, when, when, we asked these guys, when was the last time you've been in a fight or been hit by a man or you've hit another man? And hands, uh, maybe one hand will go up out of 35 guys that start a class. 
And we go, well, guess what? You're gonna experience that in a controlled environment and we're gonna try and mentally and emotionally trigger you to get you fully distracted to go tunnel vision. And when you go tunnel vision, you're gonna use the skills you learned yesterday to use today in this combative two-on-one or one-on-one situation. And so to get these men emotionally worked up, to get them to shut down, to get them to bond. How about this, Ryan? Um, You know, we hear about the phrase, blood is thicker than water, but it's taken out of context. The actual phrase is the covenant of the blood is thicker than the water of the womb. In other words, men that have gone through adversity, men that have spilled blood together, have a greater bond than siblings that have been born from the same womb. The covenant of the blood is thicker than the water of the womb. And so, dude, you imagine 35 guys come to the project, hour number one, and they're all strangers. For them to open up and talk about physical abuse, sexual abuse, mental abuse, what what happens in their life that created these limiting beliefs and these shitty experiences and self-sabotaging behaviors and addictions and vices that they can't talk about at work because they might lose their career. We need these guys to bond and connect to feel safe around each other. And no better way to get them to bond and connect than for my instructors to basically become the enemy. So it's basically my four instructors, it's myself and four instructors, two Marines, a Navy SEAL, and an Air Force SEER guy, uh, and myself. And I teach entrepreneurship and emotional discipline and time management, productivity, all that stuff. But for my instructors to become the enemy forces them to become a unified force together. I love seeing an hour number two, three, four, and five. They're by themselves. They're just focused on themselves. Hour number nine, 10, 11, 12, when they're going through the mud pit, they're hiking with logs, they're pulling a truck, now they're referring to each other as brother. You got this brother, let me help you out. Let me grab your rucksack, let me grab your sledgehammer. Go up the hill and I'll give you a rucksack back. We want these guys to bond because at hour number 36, that's where we have what I consider the most difficult evolution of all. It's not an ice bath, it's not a truck pull, it's not the beach torture that Will puts them through. It is sitting down in a classroom environment, opening up their journals and literally me walking them through the worst experience of their life. And I talk about mine. I go, hey, between the ages of four and six, I was molested by two older boys. And here's how that showed up in my life, in my relationship with my kids, in business, with the way I led my company, in the addictions that I had. And that's the only evolution of 19 evolutions that we have. The only evolution that has boxes of Kleenex Every other guy, there's a box of Kleenex sitting on the table because myself included, grown men were just falling apart crying because for the first time ever, we're purging. We're talking about the thing that we hid and never talked about that's been haunting us forever. And these are the things I'll never show on social media because it's so private to them. Uh, I will take this to my grave. I don't share it with anyone. I'll never write a book about it. Uh, But we hear some horrible stuff, man. And... These men feel freed, and for them to have that freedom to talk like that, we need them to bond. Best way for them to bond is for us to beat them down physically, mentally, emotionally, uh, to see the, us as the enemy, for them to become a strong, unified front. So during hour number 36 and beyond, it's now us against them. And what, again, people don't see is the final 12 hours, we become their friends, and now it's positive reinforcement, and we let down our character, now we're fist bumping, now we're saying congratulations, now we're saying, hey, I can't wait to have dinner with you Friday night uh, and see how you look cleaned up in a black suit. But we, we drop that wall too, but we have to come out with fire in the beginning to be able to get them to bond.